Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today's TV show that I will be reviewing is Altered Carbon Episode 9, Rage in Heaven. But before I get into the review, if you are enjoying the content, please like the channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for notifications. I will greatly appreciate it. And if you're not caught up with Altered Carbon or aren't familiar with this TV series, consider this your spoiler warning. And now, on to the review. So, in this episode, we are very close to the end. One more episode left after this episode 9. And we start off the episode with a game of rock, paper, scissors. It comes into the story a little bit later. I, I mean, my, maybe that this game 250 years from now, it will have still been around. I want to believe that the Big Bang Theory one, the Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock would be the one that gets adapted, but obviously the original was the one that fared a lot more um, easier, I guess. But anyway, so we have a little bit of, um, of that first scene that comes out. I thought it was kind of cute, but I was like, really? Rock, paper, scissors? That That's what lasts? Not Mario Brothers? Not nothing? Not, you know, I don't know. But anyways, it comes into, into play later on in the episode. But we cut to Kovac at the motel talking to Poe. And they're going back and forth. A little bit of conversation. And they're talking. You know, he's trying to get a hold of everyone you know, Elliot and where are they at? And he's trying to get Ortega and Post is like, why would she pick up for you? Cause none of them are picking up. And she goes, why would they pick up for you? Or why would Ortega pick up for you after the last episode you told her to get away and that you don't care about her anymore. And right when that happens, we see Ortega coming in from, or coming into the hotel injured. And it looks like to be from the pre previous episode. Um, and honestly, my mind didn't put two and two together because in the last episode, we saw her holding the little girl, which we knew as the viewers, as Takashi's sister. But honestly, I didn't even put those two, to two together. I was like, oh, she just made it out. And I kind of assumed that. So, you know, Kovat takes her up to her room and starts healing her up. And in that process of healing her up, he realizes that this is not actually her, that it's her sister now in Ortega's body or a clone over, over Ortega's body. And he mocks her. He's like, oh, I could see why you are attracted to Ortega pointing out at how beautiful Ortega's body or just how beautiful she is all the way around. And, you know, you get this creepy vibe because she's like, oh, you know, we're meant to be together. And which is, this is her sister talking to her brother. And we're supposed to understand that there's this deep kind of bond between them. But honestly, it came off a little bit uh, creepy in that in that aspect and maybe it's gonna pay off in the last episode of this first season but i just thought it was kind of creepy the fact that she's so obsessed with her brother and mind you um i guess 250 years of searching for your brother could probably do that i mean searching for anybody for that amount of time will probably make you obsess about that person pretty pretty heavily but you know, Kovet picks up on it and he's like, hey, where's, you know, everyone? And she goes, I told you that I will hurt anyone that keeps me away from you. And we found that in the in the other episode that any. And so she found that Goldsberry, the actress, it was standing in the way of her and her brother being together forever. 
so she had to take her out. And in this instance, hey, or Ortega's trying to keep them from each other. So she's like, I'm going to have Mr. Lang or Luang Lung or whatever go after everyone that Ortega loves. This meaning her family. So Kovac realizes that, you know, she that she's basically called uh, sent a hitman to to just annihilate Ortega's family. And Kovac just goes crazy and tries to go and stop them. But ultimately, it's too late. You know that uh, Mr. Lang shows up there and he gets in there by saying, hey, are you a believer? And obviously they're very religious people, her mom and her family. So they're like, yeah, we are. And they allow him in and he kills everyone from I'm assuming it's the uncle, but he kills Ortega's uncle. He kills Ortega's mom, all her cousins. There was these two little boys playing video games and he kills them. So, I mean, we, we hate this dude, Mr. Lang. I mean, they just solidify that in that. I, I, when I saw that scene, they didn't show it on TV. You know, they got killed off camera, which is a good thing. Cause I was about to shut this whole thing down. I'm like, if they, so if they, if they start showing me kids being, you know, being killed on camera, that's super distasteful, but I'm glad that they didn't, uh, do that for this, uh, you know, in that scene. So Kovac gets there, but he's too late. He goes in there and he realizes what happened and he's beside himself. And basically we cut, you know, he's just kind of in the kitchen and, and Ortega's mom is, is, is like lying dead next to him. And you could see him thinking of something, but then we cut to the city and we find Kovac now sitting at a bar and who's, you know, to come and, and meet him at this bar, but his sister. So his sister knows his whereabouts and, and shows up at the bar and is basically saying, Hey, you know what? Like, I know everything. Why are you doing it? And, and again, she's reiterating, you know, Takashi's sister saying, Hey, yeah, I'm doing this for us. Why can't you see this? And he just basically says, look, I'm done. I don't want to do anything. I'm, I'm done saving people. And she tries one last thing. She shows him a picture of, of both of them with their mom, like the OG when they were just little kids to try to like turn him into the dark side to join him. But he's like, I'm done. I don't care about them. I don't care about Ortega. I don't care about you. I'm going to go off world and I'm going to take, you know, Bancroft's wife or sister daughter and you know i still haven't figured that out i think i think it's her sister i mean her, i think it's kovacs i mean a, a bancroft's daughter but she's in the wife's body but there was an in a previous episode i think i mentioned in, in that review that he offered kovac like saying hey if you stop this investigation you could live out your fantasy in whatever way so it looks like he almost takes her up because he leaves the bar and there's this car waiting for him and you know Ban uh, Bancroft's wife is in there in a very risky or very revealing outfit and we see Kovac smile like he's just gonna you know let his deviant side uh, go in there but before he gets to her Kovac's sister has him being followed by our hitman over here that we now despise Mr. Luang or Lang or whatever his name is and but he basically gets in this space car and he goes off into the sky and he's just looking up well, then all of a sudden we cut to back to the hotel room. We see Poe. We see the detective that was helping Ortega with the blood sample. We see Elliot and his wife looking at this car taking off. And all of a sudden we see Kovac saying, oh, there I go. Because, he, you know, Poe goes, there he goes. And everybody's saying, yep, there he goes. And Kovac enters and he goes, yep, there I go. And you're like, what? What, what's going on here? How is he there if we all just saw him 
kind of go up. And then you you get this blank screen where it says 15 hours earlier. So now we're going to go back and kind of find out what's going on. So we, we, we cut back to Kovac asking like, hey, where's Elliot and his wife? And to, to let him know where where they are because he knows that his sister's just going to go after everyone that is trying to prevent them from being together. And then we, then we cut to Elliot and his wife talking at a restaurant, kind of just going over something personal, how angry they are and, and how Elliot's wife that's now in a man's sleeve. She like, she's like with her anger is almost turning. Like she's like, I want to kill someone. And then we get a little jump scare where Elliot finds him and he's relieved. Like, oh, thank God that you guys aren't killed. And then we cut to Ortega's house where we have this massacre there. And we see the lieutenant in there that caused all this stupid mess to happen. And he he sees the the destruction and the and the, just the goriness of the crime scene that he shows up. And he goes into the kids room where you know we see the bodies lying down but we don't really see them which is a good thing i'm glad that the directors didn't go too much with that and he kind of hits it home he starts throwing up when he sees that just letting us know that hey this is ridiculous and and you know just the inhumane aspect of someone just going that crazy in in revenge i guess and he starts throwing up which again just hammers home the gruesomeness that we saw in that episode, or at least in that murder scene. So after that, we cut back to the hotel and we see the detective that was helping Ortega, Mikey. He basically goes in there and says, look, you know, with his hands up because Poe's like, you're an intruder. You're not supposed to, you're not here. Please leave the premises. And Kovac's like, wait, let's hear him out. And he says, look, Ortega's family's dead. I don't know what's going on. I can't find Ortega and I want to help. So he ends up, you know, um, Kovac basically doesn't want any of this. He says, you guys... Need, you know, he tells Poe, get them new IDs, get them off this world because I don't want any more innocent people basically dying because of me. And and he walks out of the hotel and we're all expecting Poe to honor his word. So then we cut to Takashi's sister or, or Kovac's sister um, in her, you know, palace. We don't really know where it's at. Um, at this point anyways, and we find out where he, she's keeping Ortega in this kind of a, well, in a cell, I guess, but it basically threatens her in saying, Hey, I'm going to put you in this virtual torture chamber and I'm going to let, you know, Mr. Lang over here, torture you, you know, for, to pay for all the crimes that you have committed. So we get a little dialogue there, but then we cut back to um, Kovac re-entering uh, the hotel room. And he has like this, well, he basically went and grabbed the clone machine. And he goes up to his room and he's being all rude to Poe. And he says, hey, I don't want anybody in my room. So he's in there and he's looking at stuff. He's like working on something where we hear these loud noises on there in his room, like on the at the door. And he doesn't want to answer it. And it's Elliot basically breaks down the door and, and it's Elliot, his wife, it's Mikey, it's Poe. It's, and Poe's like completely with that, with them breaking in. He goes, oops, sorry. I couldn't stop them from coming into your room again. And that was a, a, a running joke in the first three episodes that everyone just kept on showing up. He just let people go into his room and he was a little bit annoyed and all these guys, all these people tell him like, Hey, this is no longer your fight. Like you helped. Elliot says you helped my daughter and my wife and Elliot's wife says you helped my brother. I mean, my husband and my daughter and Mikey says, Hey, you turn, you, you know, I want to, I want to see this bitch dead because of what she did to Ortega and I love Ortega and I want to, I want to find her. And they basically said that the bro, like this isn't your fight anymore. 
just you we're all in this and we're gonna help you out and and all of a sudden this is this amazing scheme comes true to fruition so uh, Kovac enters the virtual reality one more time and he, and he says a goodbye to Elliot's daughter you know you know obviously he developed some kind of affection in trying to help her so then we basically go into a montage of what the plan is going to be and they're going they're gonna make a clone of Kovac and they're gonna split up and that's the clone that we see in the in the bar scene basically you know so they they set up everything that we saw in the opening act of this episode that you know it wasn't really Kovac it was a, a different you know his, the clone that he made and when they ask him he goes hey look he's going to a pleasure palace which is basically in the first scene or in the first episode of this season when he goes into the hotel Poe basically tells him hey that you know we have every everything the flesh could want and he basically shows them this sky palace of the ultimate of ultimate like if you could afford you know if you could afford it this is the the ultimate pleasure palace and basically um kovac or takashi figures out that this is the place where his sister is or paul might have you know discovered that now that i'm thinking about it but one of them discovered that that's where his sister's at and that's where they need to go because that's where his sister does her backup as, as i mentioned in in the last episode review that i did they basically back themselves up if you could afford it you, you back yourself after so many days or hours basically I think it might be hours, like every 24 hours, if, if you back your stuff up. And in that moment is like you, you glitch a lot because you're downloading. So there's like this moment where they, they have an opening to stop uh, his sister from cloning herself or downloading herself. So she's only left with one body, the one that she's in. So again, they develop this scheme and then we go back to like the opening scene and how, you know, this plan is going into fruition. So basically, Ali is going to be acting like a general and Kovac's going to be inside the car waiting. And I'm going to take I'm going to pause that real quick here. There there's a guy that comes out from this pleasure palace and he he meets this po this guy that's dressed like a pope. But I recognize that guy that 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 actor did a whole mess of documentaries that I've seen. And I think he even in the History Channel, he he had a, his own show for a little bit about weapons. And it, I mean, that just I could not unsee that in him. And thank God he got killed almost within the, you know, three minutes later of seeing it because I, re I loved his documentaries. He was so into history. And I think he did a, a documentary about, about Alexander the Great that I completely enjoyed. And it was, it, 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 I get that he's an actor and he was trying, I mean, I'm glad that he's acting, but um, I mean, just if you've seen those documentaries and you recognize them, I'm sure you felt the same way. But anyways, so they get in there and you start seeing just how, how, un, how just sensory deprived this civilization is. So Elliot is dressed like a commander to say any fetish. So he goes in there and there's this beautiful and young 19 year olds basically saying you could do whatever you want to me anything you you heart could desire if you want to stab me or shoot me and then make love to those areas you can and you're like what the hell and he's basically alia can't believe it so he has to drug her and he doesn't do anything obviously he, he kind of drugs her and, and he passes out and so then obviously the 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 plan is in full effect and they they run into a couple of hiccups but nothing that they can't surpass right and there is a little drama and tension but it, it doesn't become that much of an issue so basically they they get to they get what they want they get close enough to his sister to be able to stop the download and interrupt her and and, and you you feel like hey checkmate and i should have known 
you know how when the there's that trope in when you have the villain and he has the superhero or the hero locked up and then they go ahead and tell them their whole plan but this was reversed of that like he should have just acted Takashi should have just or Kovac should have just acted quick what his plan was going to do but he wanted her to confess why it, it, it was mentioned earlier that they needed her to confess so she loses all her money all her influence all her influence everything so she basically goes down and we get in the fallen angel scene we see in the opening scene we see the the girl falling from the sky and it's been hinted at in episode uh, seven eight and now nine and she basically fills in that story and then tells us the actual story of what happened to bancroft and his murder and basically how his wife was in on it and they did the virus that killed the rebellion was the same virus that was given to Bancroft and we find out that it was a suicide and and Kovac's sister says hey you know what but yeah but but Bancroft's ego wouldn't allow him to think that he committed suicide so he thought it was a murder and basically tells us the whole story and then how the girl jumped out and committed suicide because she didn't want to die at the hands of Bancroft because he was going crazy and insane and it brings out like the worst in people and it brought out the worst in Bancroft so there's this whole disposition and talking 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 and then right when it's gonna end we see uh, Elliot gets stabbed in the leg by uh, who else right Mr. Lang he's always there protecting or somewhere in there and we find out that our heroes are now being surrounded by the bodyguards of his sister and that's the episode it was a good episode all, all in all I enjoyed the the reveals I thought the oh and the the rock paper scissors part was him and his clone basically saying like who was going to be the one that was going to get to go to the pleasure palace and have a bunch of sex basically it was the rock paper scissors I it was funny I liked the interactions between himself and himself uh it was cute but that was the rock paper scissors but again i enjoyed i enjoyed it i can't wait to watch the last episode of season one if you're if you've been you know uh following along or if you've already seen them uh, I, I know you guys are enjoying it as much as i am it's been a hell of a roller coaster and the twists and turns i should have seen in this episode but I think I'm just trying to follow along with the story so much and I'm so invested in the story that I'm 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 following every word that comes out of these characters' mind because I don't wanna or mouth because I don't wanna miss anything. But let me know your thoughts about episode nine down in the comments. Do, do you guys enjoy it? Uh, um, do you guys think it's, it's moving good? Do you guys completely understand what's going on? Did you guys feel lost or, or are you guys right on key with this, with this um, uh, series and episode? So let me know your thoughts down in the comments about episode nine. And with that said, like always, that's a wrap.